I'm with Tom. Tom uh, is a couple of years on me and about a foot as well. <laughs> and Tom had a Bimax uh, about eight weeks ago. Yes. Uh, for uh, the management and treatment and cure of obstructive sleep apnea. And uh, a Bimax is double jaw surgery and it's also called MMA. And uh, we did that for you at the local hospital. Yes. Uh, it's a private hospital. Mm. And you were referred to us originally by, I think your wife and yes. your GP and so forth. Yeah. But uh, initially you had obstructed sleep obstructed apnea. Obstructed sleep apnea, yeah. Uh, several years ago, um, I went and saw my GP. I was lethargic, putting on weight, lack of energy, um, and low testosterone too. And he became my new GP. My old one uh, retired, and it was for my yearly checkup and all that. And he was interested. He said, "I want to know why your testosterone is going low." He says a lot of that is triggered by sleep habits. And uh, he said, I, "Plus my ongoing AF, I had too. It kept intermittently coming and going." So um, he decided, he says, um, he decided to send me to this, um, to, to start from scratch and send me to this uh, sleep center. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to get an assessment of really what was going on. So I went and I attended the uh, sleep center and they gave me this, um, this kit to, uh, for me to take home that night with all the plugs and wires and all that. And they measured the quality of my sleep. So I had that on uh, through, the, through the night Got it the next morning, took it all off, brought it back to the sleep center, handed it in. They said, thank you very much. We'll be in touch with you. If there's any problems with it, we'll be in touch with you. Uh, however, just about a few days later, the pandemic started, the lockdown happened. And so all medical practices were shut down. So several months had gone by and before it reopened. So it reopened, I think a few months later, but they didn't, call, they didn't contact me. So I assumed everything was fine. Uh, then eventually I went back for my follow-up appointment with him and he said, well, how did you go with the, with the sleep center? And uh, I said, well, I'm, it must be fine because they haven't contacted me. He shook his head. He goes, no. He says, they dropped the ball. They didn't contact you. He says, I think, you got, I think your file got lost in the mire from, all the, from having the lockdown. So he contacted them and he asked for the results. Brought out the bit of paper and showed me these results. And he says... These were not, not, these were very serious. And he showed me there was a breakdown hour by hour. And there was one point between 2 and 3 a.m. in the morning, yeah. I was disturbed 46 times. Meaning, and meaning you were suffocating. I was suffocating. 46 yes. times in that one hour. Yes, because I, my, I was blocked, my breathing was blocked. I was gasping that there was a lack of oxygen getting to my brain. Mm -hmm. And that's the apnea. The apnea, yes. And that explained why I was waking up, I was feeling lethargic, dizzy. I thought I had vertigo, um, and uh, I'd wake up with a dry mouth, dry throat. Uh, I, I would wake up more tired than I was when I went to bed. So um, he referred me back to the sleep center, and I went and saw the doctor, he looked at my results, and he told me there were several options that I could do. He said one of them was having a disc that fits in my jaw at night. That's a uh, snoring splint, yes. plus all the sleep dentists. Yes, yes. He said the other one that was most common, he said which would probably be most appropriate for me, was the CPAP machine. And that's the machine, it's the size of a toaster, and it has all these vacuum hoses connected to it. Right. And he said that's probably the one that's... And you that, got some pictures for me. Huh? Yes, I, I have some pictures. Video. Yeah. He said he referred me and we decided to go down that route. He referred me to the local surgical uh, supply center. Yeah. And uh, they had um, a whole section of CPAP machine. I assume that was a pretty uh, common uh, uh, form of treatment because the whole waiting room was men in their 50s like me. We were sitting there waiting for the CPAP machine on who had you know, bad sleep habits. So I went there and they had a whole line of CPAP machines. Yeah. And the first model they gave me, they said, well, this one will probably you know, take this home and use this. It was a monthly rental to see how it worked. So I took it home that night. I turned it on, I strapped it on. They had these hot, sweaty, rubbery straps. I strapped it on and turned it on and this blast of cold air just came right up 
up through my mouth and nose. And I tried to go lay down and go to sleep that night and there was just all these cords and wires I was getting tangled up in. And I'm very claustrophobic. I had a hard time dealing with it because I can't even sleep with the wristwatch on. And so it lasted for about an hour. It was so noisy and cumbersome, I couldn't fall asleep with it. And I thought, it didn't work. So, so I took it off. You're not I, the first person to say that. Uh, I mean, you know, I imagine strapping up the kids. Oh, that's, that's terrible. terrible. Yeah. yeah. So it's just, as you can see in the photo, it was, it, yeah, it was not very comfortable. It was like something it was like wearing an iron mask. So I went back to the surgical place, and they said, "Oh, oh that's fine. That's fine. Look, we can find a less uh, invasive uh, machine for you." So what they did, they gave me a smaller machine, and this one, instead of having the whole a hose that come in my mouth. This one just had a strap that came across my nose and just blasted cold air up my nostrils. But the same thing, you had these hot, wiry sort of straps, lots of cords, lots of noise and all that. And there was also this big maintenance sheet on how to keep it clean, water and all that. And again, I, I couldn't make it to the night. I made it about an hour or so. I didn't even, couldn't even fall asleep. And I just chucked the whole thing off. And I said, this is not going to work. And, and as I told him that, he said, well, this is, this, is your, this is your options. The other option was to have an ear, nose, and throat surgeon do a surgery that removes a lot of the fleshy bits of my tongue yeah. and throat and all that. He said, however, that's, there's a lot of complications that, have, that, that come with that. He says, that doesn't really work a lot of times. He said, your best bet is just having a CPAP machine. Just get used to it and deal with it. So that's when I sort of decided that's when I came and saw you. But they didn't mention the surgery no, to you at all. The, at the, all. the, the, the MMA no. or the Bimax surgery, they, they, they didn't, just didn't, didn't, didn't come up with it all, no, at all. Period. Not all. No, not period, yeah. And they didn't, like, they didn't say that this would cure you or potentially no. cure you. They just didn't talk about didn't it. Didn't talk about it, yeah. They just the say, so CPAP, sleep splint with a dentist. Or ear, nose and throat. Ear, nose and throat surgery. Cut away your tongue, your palate. Yeah. Bits of your nose. Yes, yeah. So that was it. And, and what I did for you, yeah. which means no CPAP, no, no sleep, no, sleep, no none of that. Yeah. They did not even offer it. No. Why, yeah. why do you think that, that, that's the case? I don't know. Maybe he thought that you were involved with like people who had car accidents or maybe deformities or so. Yeah. And I think probably because he'd been there a long time and he looked like he was about ready to retire. Right. And I think this is probably a newer sort of procedure that's come along that yeah that's not very well um, used a lot too well maybe it's my fault because I don't talk about it that maybe too yeah could be yeah, yeah. I don't know um, yeah but then also it was, it was like when I had my art supports I had problems with my feet and ankles when I was playing basketball yeah. I went and saw a surgeon in Sydney and he said look there's nothing you can do about it because I had a broken ankle yeah he said you're just gonna have to take a lot of um, Panadine, or take a lot of ibuprofen. Yeah. Or I can just keep injecting you with cortisone. Right. So he didn't say anything at all about seeing this podiatrist. Right. I went and saw the podiatrist, and he made these arch supports for me. Yeah. And I started wearing those, and all the pain and discomfort went away. Oh, okay. And I told the surgeon, I said, oh, he, when he asked about how I was doing, I said, oh, I went and saw a podiatrist. And instead of him saying, well, that's great, you're out of pain now, he just said, well, that's, that's not really, a that's more of a mechanical issue, you know, that's not a medical issue, you know, he said, because I'm a, I'm a, you know, a very top ranked um, foot and knee, uh, knee surgeon. So I think it's because of that train of thought. It, it, it was outside well, of their well, discipline. There's, there's a great joke, I, I love telling it. If you've got a brain tumor and you go to a podiatrist, they always give you a new shoe. <laughs> and if you go to a, a, a GP, they'll give you a pill. If you go to an orthopedic surgeon, they'll still operate on your knee. Yeah. And if you go to a neurosurgeon, he'll cure you of the brain tumor. Mm. But the podiatrist will take complete credit for it. Well, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. It's a bit politically incorrect to say that, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But, so I went and saw you. And you showed me about how taking furniture out, removing, bringing the job it forward yeah. and all that. Or not just, take the furniture out, made the room bigger. Made the room bigger, yeah, yeah. Lift, lifted the tent. 
Yeah. Which made sense because I remember it sleeping. Every time I'd sleep, I just felt like I was being choked. I was being strangled. Like there was just, I was there was just this vibration, this snoring, and I felt like I was breathing through a straw. So um, I was a bit reluctant, obviously, to have the surgery and all that, and uh, especially with my AF, or I was afraid of having a stroke. I don't know. I was, you heard all these horror stories about, you know, men my age sort of just, you know, coming up, you know, having all these complications during surgery. Bit the bullet anyway, and uh, I remember coming out in recovery, and uh, I, I felt this really, I felt heat, a, a, a lot of heat, like something had gone on, but right away I could breathe. Yeah. And I was the first thing I was telling all the recovery staff, like, wow, I can breathe. Like I had a third lung. Yeah. And it was the best feeling in the world because I felt like for, you know, for the last several years, just really struggling to sleep, you know, exercise too, gasping. Now all of a sudden, I, I, I had like a open fluid lung, like I, like I had congestion in my lungs and I was now taking, um, uh, what was that they take for, um, not panadine for it, um, for the congestion. Yeah. Oh, that's the, the, the uh, one that's, the it takes the fluid off your lungs. Yeah. Yes, the anti -history, the one that's outlawed by, yeah, by the athletic association. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, uh, pseudoepidrine. Oh, that's the other one. Yeah, yeah. that's what I felt like, it, like I'd had this congested lungs and all, and I'd taken a lot of pseudoepidrine, yeah. and now all of a sudden it was like everything was, has cleared up. But it felt natural though, too. And uh, I remember you know, waking up in the hospital, it was really intense the first couple of days you know I had the painkillers and all that the, the staff they were really great they were fantastic and um, um, I was having a lot of soup it wasn't you know obviously I wasn't chewing a bit it was I felt very very numb but right away the breathing just felt so much different and uh, those three days in the hospital were really good and on the first day coming home that was the toughest day probably the first two days at home uh, because I couldn't lie down when I slept. I had to stay upright. So I took my airport pillow for sleeping and I propped that up at the back of my neck. And I propped up pillows so I'd remain upright. And probably on the third day at home, I got my really first good night's sleep. I actually had REM sleep, I had dreams and all that. And I woke up at four o'clock in the morning like, wow, I was back, you know, I was, I was actually sleeping. And uh, a week later, the swelling had gone away. Um, I was now, you know, having smoothies, having oatmeal for breakfast and all that, but I was actually sleeping, like my whole face, the swelling in my face and my neck had gone down right away. And you'll see in that photo there, when I was at the park, that was seven days later. I looked like a completely new person, but people were telling me, it was like, you look like, like my skin was supple again. I didn't, I, I wasn't puffy. Like many times I was, I had this look like I'd been up all night. Uh, I was kind of like droopy very forgetful um, my short-term memory was terrible too I had to write everything down so I wouldn't forget I wanted the shops I'd have to make a list so I wouldn't forget now all of a sudden I felt really lucid and energetic too despite there was a bit of discomfort the first probably week or ten days every day I woke up I felt a little bit better I felt you know a little bit that the tingling had gone away so I could feel like you know good things were happening the best thing about it was that now my brain was that now I taught myself to sleep again instead of me falling asleep at you know eight o'clock at night or falling asleep in the matinee in the theater um, I was now staying awake until you know 10 30 11 o'clock at night sleeping solidly through the night I'm waking up at 5 a.m. 6 a.m. I felt like I've slept in and I've got all this energy now I'm going out and working out in the mornings I'm feeling great I'm taking the dog for a walk uh, I'm getting 16 18 hours out of my day instead of 10 hours um, I've lost 13 kilos just because of, I don't have that this, this craving for like the meat pies or the food, like, especially when you're really tired and your your body's stressed. You have this craving for comfort food. I don't have those cravings anymore. Uh, now I'm, I can you know, my voice. I, I can now verbalize a lot better too when I'm on the phone, um, and I just feel a lot more lucid. Like when I speak to people now too, it's like I really feel more engaged. So I'm getting a lot more out of my day now, and I don't have to wear any machines or anything like that. 
And my wife says, when I sleep, I don't make a sound all night long. Even my kids too would say they can hear me snoring from the next room. Yeah. Now I'm the quietest sleeper in the house. Legitimately, no, no, not a noise. She says, she says I don't make a sound at night anymore. Right. Uh, and I so, know it's true. I'm just having these dreams now. Whereas before, it was just I'd fall asleep for like 45 minutes or an hour, I'd wake up and wake up tired. Now I'm waking up. I'm waking up refreshed. Like I've got energy, yeah. I've got natural energy. I've got mental energy, physical, emotional energy too. You know, it's like now I'm getting things done. Uh, I'm a lot more productive too. My quality of life is is, is, is shot to the roof, tenfold. I, I, had I known, I would have had this done sooner. Yeah, but now at least the good thing is now I can go back. I can make up the lost time. That's what I'm doing now. But, yeah. So um, so I've got a lot more a lot more natural energy now too, and uh, I don't need to have two or three cups of coffee in the morning to get going. And now I just wake up, you know, when the sun the sun comes up. 5 o'clock, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., and I'm off. I'm off to the gym. I get my workout done, and then I come back, take the dog for a walk, have breakfast, uh, make some phone calls, get my day sorted out, um, and then I have I get everything that I need to get done. It's not like I I have to stop or you know like I'm forgetting stuff either too. Like before, I sometimes I lose my train of thought too. I feel a bit sluggish. I know I no longer feel that way now. I can. I feel really, really uh, lucid and organized. My, my thoughts are a lot more composed. And I, all these things that I had assumed that maybe I was just getting old and lethargic and all that, it was all because I just had a poor night's sleep and I just couldn't breathe. And I remember taking the dog for that two weeks after I have it done, I think it was 10 days afterwards, I took the dog for a walk and we went up to Obelisk Park. And that's up at the top of the hill there. It's quite uh, King steep. Of yeah, quite steep. And, I thought I'd sort of struggle and I was just powering along oh. and it was just like like my lungs were working now again like I was just filling with the air like I just had this new airway yeah. and it's almost like a, a carburetor one of those hot rods when they had a blocked air filter and they changed the air filter and all of a sudden they the, the car sort of you know the, the, the fuel oxidizes faster too so it gets a lot more a, more power. a lot more power yeah but, well, well, you're you're a, you're an athlete mm -hmm. by background I mean yeah. if you uh, a professional basketball player, yeah. and uh, you came out to the year from, yeah. from the states, I was doing that, and yeah. uh, and like you're you're the tallest man in Newcastle, maybe <laughs> almost. Uh, I don't think there's many that. people out compete with. Yeah. So it's surprising that you developed it anyway. Yeah, I think the last few years, I think I slowed down. I'd stopped playing. I had back surgery, yeah. uh, although I was still doing a lot of walking and all that. I wasn't as active. And um, my diet was the same, and I think I just, I, I think by just probably being lethargic and being unaware, I just started putting on a few kilos, and um, and that I think that's where the, all the problems started. But then also too, for some reason, the last couple of years, I just started getting really fleshy around the neck, and that's when I really started snoring, especially if I'd have a beer or wine or so. And I didn't realize, I figured I snored all the time because... Because Newcastle's a dry town, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think, well, yeah, I may have snored last night. My mouth's a bit dry, but yeah. oh well, I'll carry on. And, but eventually it just kept getting worse and worse sleep. And that's how it was, it was probably leading to my, my poor sleep habits were, was leading to me having lack of energy or having lack of motivation to get anything done, especially in the morning. Because if you, when you have a bad night's sleep, the last thing you want to do is go for a workout in the morning or do anything active. I'm too worried about preserving my energy. Well, you have to be active because yeah. you're coaching all the time. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And I remember like when we'd have, you know, night coaching sessions and we'd have training at night too, I'd have to have a car. I'd look at it like, oh my God, that's late. I gotta, like, I'd have to be at home by six or seven o'clock. So I'd have dinner so I could just start dozing off by eight o'clock at night. Now it's like up until like 10 o'clock, I don't feel lethargic or tired at all. I really get the most out of it. Um, and I feel like I, I don't feel, especially in the afternoons, I don't feel tired or drowsy, which I'd always feel or like yeah. after lunch, you know, or driving somewhere on the freeway too, driving to the central coast. You know, it's, it's two or three in the afternoon, I start feeling drowsy, I have to pull over and get a coffee just to stay awake. 
now I just feel like this that this real natural alertness too. So it's really been fantastic. I tell you what, these last few weeks have been it's like I, I it's almost like I have a whole new outlook on life mm -hmm. because like I'm getting proper oxygen now too, you know. Yeah. Well okay. here's a here's a question for you. Right. So you had symptom or feeling A, B, C, D, E. No one's putting it together. Yeah. But your GP said, look, you've got low testosterone. I think you might not be sleeping right. Go for a sleep study. And they then give you a diagnosis mm. of obstructive sleep apnea based upon an AHI score of 47. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But from that point forward, you're a bloke with obstructive sleep apnea with an AHI 47, right? Yeah. And they give you CPAP and they're trying to get the score down. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But then you come to me and I say, oh, oh, okay, you've got an AHI 47, but you still have symptom A, B, C, and D, and E, and F. Yeah. And we've made that go away. Mm. Yeah. Do you think it's worthwhile yeah. to go back for a sleep study? Oh, definitely. I think I have one scheduled for March or so. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Which I know right away, even though I don't have the data, hasn't been done. Yeah. I, I, I know symptomatically, I, it, it's 100% improvement because my wife says I don't make a sound during the night. And I don't wake up at, I don't go to bed at 9 and then wake up at 10.30 and then 12 and then 2 and 3. Yeah. Wake up tired. I sleep all the way through. I'll wake up 4.30 or 5 or so. And when I wake up, it's like I'm ready to go. Like I, I've got tons of energy. Yeah, right. And I get out, and I, and um, my body feels like it's, it's time to move. And I do that, and now, so now, I, for the first time in years now, now I have a routine, and uh, I know that I'm breathing a lot better. And I know when I wake up, like I, I don't, my AF is gone too. I'm back now in sinus rhythm. And um, but with medication or just naturally? I think just naturally. Yeah, right. Well, I cut back on the, the caffeine because I don't need the caffeine anymore. Yeah, okay. yeah. But the GP, he, he was under the impression that the AF was being triggered by the sleep, sleep apnea. apnea. Yeah, right. because that was... Have you spoken to your GP? Not yet. I've scheduled to see him, I think, in the new year, too. Yeah. Okay. But he'll be impressed because one of the things he told Probably me was... We're assuming. Well, he told me, he said, you got to lose some weight. I was really hoping you'd be able to see that for the rest of your life. Well, no, his idea is like, well, you need to lose that weight too. You need to lose about, you know, 10, 10 kilos or so. Right. So I'm going to go back and say, well, there you go. I've lost 13 kilos. There you, you go. But, yeah. but he might say that it's a weight loss. It's, it's led to everything. Because you mentioned yeah. it. You put on yeah. a bit of weight. You had OSA. Yeah. So maybe it was the weight loss that's completely made it go away. Yeah. What do you think of that? Well, I think it's like maybe the, the egg came before the chicken. The weight loss happened because now I've got this energy. Right? I'm getting a really good night's sleep at night too. I don't have those food cravings for comfort food. Yeah. I'm waking up, and the first thing I do in the morning, someone comes up. I'm doing my workout routine, I'm going to the local gym. Uh, then I'm coming back and I'm taking the dog for a walk. So I'm burning a lot more calories, but I don't feel sore or tired. Okay. I feel really good. Natural, like like this morning. This morning I got up at 6 a.m. and went and did my workout, boxing workout. Did the F45. Came back, took the dog for a walk, uh, been on the phone, I've been doing emails and all that. And now it's like, you know, 5.30, quarter to 6 in the evening. And I feel great. I don't feel tired at all. Yeah, yeah. And I just have this sort of natural energy too. And this mental energy that I haven't had in years. So. All right, so yeah. do you think um, if, the, if the sleep physician says, no, I've done the, the uh, sleep study and you still have an AHI of... Mm. And I, I want you to go back on the seat. That would, would you do it? No, no, no. It, 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 that, it's just that's it's, behind. That's you. behind me. I'll never put that thing on again. All right. Yeah. Well, the, the 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 GP basically, or not the GP, the sleep physician said it's a CPAP or it's a snoring splint or it's ear, nose, and throat surgery where we're going to take furniture out of the room. We yeah. we we're trying to make that airway bigger by taking stuff out. And the CPAP is just really to inflate the airway. Mm. But no one's actually suggested to you make the airway bigger, make the yeah. room bigger, try to fit in all the furniture. Yes. Yeah, no. Which is the MMA or the Biomax. Mm. No, not one person suggested that. No. Not one. Well, except your wife. Yeah. 
that's it. That was it, yeah. <laughs> that, that's it. And that, and, and you feel better for it. It's yeah, yeah, like yeah. we didn't kill you or anything like yeah, that. You no. look great. Yeah. Like, you know, the, once I got past the first three days, it was just, it was uncomfortable, but I think, but I didn't think of it because I could breathe because yeah. for so long I was like breathing through a straw. And I think the only person that I really consulted was the, was the, the, physician, the, the doctor at the sleep center who was really getting on. I, I think he was about ready for retirement and really getting on. So I think it, that this procedure maybe hadn't come along yet. Or yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, it's been around a while, but I don't think I'm talking enough about it. So maybe I should yeah. talk to well, I'll tell you what. I'm well, for people watching it, they're yeah. just going to say, okay, well, I haven't heard of this before. Yeah. And I'm doing a bit of investigation and it's like, it's really painful. Is it? No. no. All right. Um, you were scared out of your tree though, leading up to it. Yeah. So it, it, it does produce anxiety, I yeah. think. And, and the way that maybe getting wisdom teeth, uh, having your wisdom teeth taken out? Or yeah, it's, 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 about the, it's, it's, it's the same operation. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. <laughs> we just gave it a fancier term. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's the same operation as wisdom teeth surgery, but maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah. But um, what about the cost? Well, it's like the cost of a good mattress, you know? How important is it to have a good quality sleep at night? We spent, we, right. did, we just bought a new king size mattress. We spent, I think, twelve thousand dollars on it. Wow! And people would think, well, that's that's a lot of money. Yeah. But we got a really, really nice mattress because I'm pretty big. But you spend person. a third of your life in that. Bed, exactly, you know, especially in your middle you ages, yeah. the quality of sleep is so important. And it's like, well, what do people spend for uh, for air conditioning for their house? Yeah. It depends on how, what kind of quality that you want for your life, because I think your sleep now is the foundation of everything. Do, do you think you'll live longer for it? Oh hell yeah! Even the, the the GP told me he says, look, this obstructive sleep apnea is going to lead you down a road. You're going to have problems. He says you're going to have AF. You're going. It's going to lead to other problems: diabetes, stroke, stroke, um, um, swelling, swelling of the, of the uh, yeah. swelling of the, uh, of the arteries. Um, and heart failure. Heart failure too. All of those things, you're looking down the barrel, especially at this point in your life too, as well as the increased weight gain too because of your increase of like your cortisol levels, we, we, the we, stress we, that you're putting from not getting a good night's sleep. Which was happening. Yeah. And I was just, he said, you're slowly killing yourself right. by doing this. And but, I thought, but the CPAP, I, I don't think that stops it. it just, I, I don't think, it I didn't stop know, me. I, I don't was, know what it does. It kept me more awake from having this thick hot band around my face and having this right having this vacuum hose shoving uh, air into my face yeah. and then having getting tangled up in all these cords and wires yeah I said that's gonna keep me awake just as much as the obstructive sleep apnea is yeah, maybe some people can because they sleep heavier but I, I'm just a, too light of a sleeper but in my mind too cutting things out of you yeah like cutting off your arm or cutting out your appendix or cutting off anything yeah. I, I don't think it adds to your life you know, it, it, I, I think the idea that it's net neutral has no effect on lifespan. You know, I, I don't, see, don't think it adds to your life, but if it's not neutral and it's not adding to your life, mm. taking body parts away yeah. is going the opposite direction. It has to be, just yeah. logically. Yeah. So if, if we're just giving you tissue, if we're giving you volume and mm. opening up the airways, I, I, I don't see it as, well, it's not neutral, but it's not negative either. It must be positive. Yeah. Um, but but I don't see how the CPAP does anything. I, I don't think there are very many studies that um, support that it reduces hypertension or reduces heart rate, uh, heart disease rates, or cerebrovascular disease frequency and mm. things like that. I don't think it has any effect on it. Yeah. Um, I think it's at the same stage now as when hip replacements became, you know, common. In the old days, you'd go see this orthopedic, you'd see this doctor for this chronic pain and your mobility was being affected. Yeah. And he'd say, well, you'll just have to wear this crutch and walk with a limp and just take lots of painkillers and all that. And then all of a sudden like, well, now there's this thing, this titanium yeah. replacement we put in there. Yeah. We, hand, we cut this bone away, we hammer it in, we put it in there. Yeah. And people hear about the procedure, they think, oh my God, that's gonna seem painful. That's, gonna, that's, that's a huge operation. And then they have it done. And now all of a sudden, all these years of discomfort and pain, now they can walk up and down stairs. Right. They're in their 50s and 60s. 
and they thought you know their life is slowly eroding and now they've got a a, a second sort of their, their their life quality is 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 raised and also their life expectancy is too and i think it's very similar to that well it, it took a long time didn't it to yeah. transition from walking stick to the titanium hip implant into yeah. the, a long transition period but mm -hmm. i think now you you sort of scream up and down you go that's my life yeah i, I want to be cured i want to walk yeah. i want to have mobility and now that procedure is done in less than an hour yeah and it's then there's hardly the, the infection rate is like less than one percent right and people are now walking after within like two or three days they're walking up and down the, you know, they're circulating they're on their feet again they're, they're, they're back to work and they're they're off painkillers so so this surgery for you mm. you woke up you could breathe i could breathe that's the first thing i noticed when i woke up I and was then like, you yeah. had three days so it was like uncomfortable and then after that it yeah. was as gravy it was just coming yes yeah. every day after that first week every day it just felt a bit better and better like the, the numbness started going away and the yeah. tingling did too and i could start feeling myself i had my first steak i think six five five weeks after i had it done so you had a big bimax so yeah. it was a big advancement yeah. and it just really yeah. pulled that airway forward it pulled but all over yeah it felt you, you look good your bite yeah. looks great yeah i had my yeah. first apple eat. eight weeks yeah like, and it's been eight weeks now nine weeks yeah, maybe, nine weeks yeah. 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 yeah but would you do it again I, if, if I had to go through feeling so horribly tired and lethargic, yeah, I'd do it again. <laughs> I'd do it again. Although, I, you know. But if you yeah. didn't have the OSA, you wouldn't need it, right? Yeah. 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 Just, you, just I, I, I would not. There. Having that OSA, that's almost like a like a torture, like a Chinese torture when they have, they're interrogating the prisoners because you're and they the, wake them you, up. You're and, in the CIA. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Enhanced interrogation. <laughs> they put them together, they ask them what they want to do and then they wake them up an hour later. Right. Uh -huh. You are the Americans. Navy, yeah. you're terrible. Yeah. You're and the Navy SEAL, they're training too what they do. <laughs> they, they tell them, okay, you guys are going to bed now. We'll see you at six o'clock in the morning. And then at 2 a.m. they come in and they simulate a rocket attack and they have to wake up lights are out there's no power they have to find their way through you're not allowed and to talk about your time in the Navy <laughs> seals you that's when people ring the bell they quit they say, that's, <laughs> i can take the cold weather i can take the, the sergeant yelling at me but me being woken up at two in the morning and pitch dark it's like, no i can't do that yeah there's nothing worse than having a disruptive sleep i did that with my navy oh, I, I was in the navy I, I, and they used to wake us up uh, uh, on training exercises yeah. at one or two in the morning and i just uh, uh, I always slept throughout the night. I said, why didn't you wake me up? They go, we did try. <laughs> <laughs> but you told us to. Yeah. 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 Hey, no, thank, thank, thank you for uh, watching Tom talk about OSA. Um, I really appreciate you joining Chats with Docs. And uh, my name's Paul, Tom. And we're just talking about um, Bimax surgery. And, uh, and and its potential as uh, as a, a treatment option for uh, obstructive sleep apnea. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Right. Thank you. <coughs> Caleb's just yeah. bored out of his trees.